coldest April in 60 years so far. I've got a dog which is chewing its lead. I've got animals to feed this morning. Then we've got wheat to shift along the road, sort out uh, the wheat shed. Uh, container project is still needing a bit of work. Farm job. He's in very often. Still waiting for the last cow to pop. Just got the one trailer on and the second trailer on. We're heading along the road. Going to fill up with wheat and clean out the wheat store. Lulu's waiting to get going. Nice shiny new trailer. Wheat's coming out of here, filling up this trailer and this trailer. That's the old forklift still, the new forklift. We got a call, or we phoned up um, the garage and they said it's a turbo issue. issue. They knew that because um, last I pinged in their office saying there was an issue. It's all connected up. Um, so they're coming out to look at it today. So just now we're just using this part lift, get these two loaded and clean up the shed. I better um, get the shovel and brush before it gets buried. This is one trailer full, that trailer that was there, it's the way back. They're gonna, um, Dunk's gonna go and pick up an empty trailer um, to fill up the last wee bit that's left in the uh, very corner of that shed back in there. And that'll be that shed completely emptied for the first time in a while actually. We have an oil leak on the ram, but just a loose connection here, fixed. Number three trailer's here, fill that up with the rest. The bucket looks huge on that forklift. That's all that's left there, that wee pile. Fort lifts at its limit when this bucket's full. That's us finished here, heading along the road. This trail will get dropped off and so on the next. Back home now. There's been quite a bit of rain here. It was really sunny along the road, but raining here, which is fine. Quite happy with more rain, keep it coming. May as well get it on video if they clip something. Shifting an old mower, uh, it's needing cleaned off and then sellers are going to try and sell it for us. It's been in the shed. How long has it been in the shed? Longer than Dunk's been here, so definitely longer than I've been here. Forklift's back, it was an issue with the turbo and um, there's a, a wastegate actuator on it. This is the engine bay of the forklift and for an engine to work you want fuel supply and air supply. Fuel supply is fairly easy to get a lot of. Air supply you need um, a big turbo if you want to get plenty of air in. So turbo, this spools up, draws air uh, in from here and the air filters there, draws around this pipe into the turbo and into the engine. So you use this to get extra air into your engine. And basically, once you get loads and loads of air, which is high boost, it then becomes problematic beyond that. So once it reaches a certain level, this actuator then is a, acts as a wastegate. Um, so the boost doesn't go be above a specific level. But something was wrong with this unit. So they've replaced that. And now this is working fine. It reaches the right level of boost and it's driving Rotate smoothly. While well, we're in amongst the engine, Koi's question what's this? It's aluminium and it's got a grid kind of pattern on it. This is a die grinder. So you connect up to air supply, and this bit spins really fast when you pull that trigger. It's called a die grinder because it was used to. Um, grind out the wee holes, uh, the wee dimples in dice. That's what it was designed for. 
And my favourite bit about it is the noise it makes. <coughs> but it can be used for anything. Or well, anything you need ground off or shaping things or... I've just set up these gates and put the forklift there to funnel the last two cows into the field. One's still due to have a calf. But it's um, we're hopefully banging bull this weekend, so we're going to put the bull in here. So we'll just take the cows out. That last calf can be born outside. be fine. She's waiting to get out. She knows what's happening. They love getting out in the grass, you'll see. Here's cow and calf. The other cow's still behind me, but... I'll just make sure this calf tick goes with this mother. Oh. There we go. She was thinking about doing a wee uh, U-turn. He, actually. Another mm. one's coming. There you go. Go enjoy the rest, join the rest of them. Here comes the next one. Oh, she's charging it. She's still due, you can see the size of her. Oh well, happy as Larry. We're away to pick up a bull, or we're going to try and buy one this weekend. Um, there's two different breeds sold on Sunday, and then there's a few other breeds sold on the Monday. So we've not really made up our mind which breed we're going for, but we're not focusing so much on really, really quick weight gain because it's all going through the butchery and staying on the farm. It's not as big a focus to us as it is to some other commercial commercial guys. So we'll see what happens. We'll go and uh, have a mill around, look at what bulls are for sale and see if any take a fancy. It's quite nice having the calves here. This is the first time I think Dad said when he was 14 they, the last had uh, breeding cattle on the farm. Other than the Highlanders that we've got normally, but... This is a wee steer. These are both steers, which are castrated bulls. Just shifting these gates. They were sitting in that field. We used them to round up some Highlanders the other day. I'm not needing them anymore, so I'll go and tidy them up, put them away. Now everything's out of the shed. We can start taking down the fences, the gates um, and shifting this ring feeder just now. Uh, we'll clear it all out and then we'll make a wee pen for the bull to go into. So this is the silage feeder, taking it out. It may go back in just depending on the, how everything fits together for the bull. Just tipping out all the rubbish that's in there the bottom, the dregs of the feeder, they won't want to, the cows wouldn't eat the dregs, they just like the fresh stuff. So I'm just putting this out here, over, out the way, so it's not in the road, it'll not get used for another, for a wee while till the cows come back in, so don't want it to get in the way. So these gates are actually massive big things, I made them just before the cows went in. There used to be a central passage in the shed, and these were the grids that the cattle ate through. So I took them, made them into a kind of 150% depth, because that that section there was what they were before. So I cut, cut other sections in half, welded them on the bottom, and put posts on the end so we could use them as big gates. And um, they're absolute muckle things, you can't shift them by hand. I made them too big, I think. This is the shortest one, I made them in the shed, so I've never had to take them out. Definitely too big anyway, but I'll maybe get that. Oh, jeez. I'm just going to take them out another way. I didn't bother trying. Take them out like this. They're strong enough for that. <laughs> 